Good day, everyone. Welcome back to another Obstacle Racing Media interview. I am your host, Britt Hume. Today, we've got a great interview with my friend Luis. Uh, but first, let's thank some patrons of this channel. Here they are. Here's a whole bunch of them. Yep, that guy, that girl. I know those people. Thank you so, so much uh, for contributing. Do you want to see your name on a big thing, like on a whiteboard or on a scrolling thing? Uh, get a part of the Patreon team for as little as as two bucks a month, you join us, the exclusive community. We have very cool things going on. We've got a secret Santa happening right now. We do some early content. We do some Patreon-only content. Today's interview is with my friend Lewis from All We Do Is Run. He is heavily featured in the documentary currently on ESPN. It's the latest 30 for 30 called The Infinite Race. This particular clip, we're gonna give him a chance to respond to how he and some of his friends are portrayed in that movie, and also this hot topic of cultural appropriation. Away we go. It's not a movie about running. It is a movie about runners in the Copper Canyons, the Tarahumara indigenous runners. And they are running. So if you want to see beautiful imagery of Tarahumara distance runners running in their own environment, it's a great film. The film is about uh, exploitation and cultural appropriation. So it's, it's, it's not a happy film. It's, it's, it's about the trials and the tribulations and the challenges that these people have faced for generations and generations. And the film illustrates some current uh, examples of exploitation. Unfortunately, it uses this race that happened down there in 2015 as an example of that exploitation. So, Watch the movie, watch it closely. But here's the deal. Yes, the film is incomplete. Took a little bit of courage, but I stood up to them and I said, hey, you guys, the film is beautiful and it is, and the story is important. And everything about this film is great, but it's incomplete. And here's the gist of it. The, in 2015, Josue Stevens, Maria Walton, Michael Miller, this whole group of people that are around me that we put on races together and we're friends, they were conducting this race down there. There was more than a thousand participants were there. The day before the race, the afternoon before the race, there was a kidnapping and a murder right there. So in broad daylight in front of all of the runners and the participants and people celebrating, there was a kidnapping two police officers were kidnapped and then taken away and murdered on the race course. So Josue and the committee there, it wasn't just Josue's decision, it was a group decision. They're like, there's no way that we can send people off into this race course. Including the woman on the movie who says she didn't, she never was advised. She was in these meetings, according to Josue. Yeah, and, and Matt, it's, it's so much deeper than what you see on the film. The, the dynamics of those decisions and the people involved is much, much deeper than the film has the time or the capacity to explain. Yeah, they canceled the race, which was, there was not a question about it. This is different than running into a, a thunderstorm. Right. This is running into gunfire. This, this is so to my understanding, um, the this thing happens. You guys collectively say this. We don't want to put you in danger. This is not going to happen. According to the movie and this woman, I'm forgetting her name. What's her name? Sese. Sese brings in the police and says, we're going to not run on these certain parts of the course and it's fine and you guys should run. Uh, and I have since learned that that was more of a political move of they didn't want to take the flack of the race was canceled and maybe it wasn't so safe. Do I have that basically right? Yeah, basically right. But in the process, Jose gets thrown under the bus 
And the gringos putting on the race, they don't care about us. They're just here to, to uh, capitalize, to, as if somehow you guys are like, you know, getting rich and driving Ferraris off this race in the middle of nowhere, which you're clearly not. Yeah, that's basically the, that's basically correct, Matt, what you just said. And I want to make it clear too that I, I'm not saying that, you know, I was not there and I'm not saying that so that I can distance myself from this, um, but, but I wasn't there that year. But had I been, I would have supported and I still do support the decisions that, that were made. Safety has got to be the number one priority of a race director more than anything, more than politics, more than money, more than anything, it's safety. Yes, I see your sign behind you. Safety is our number one priority. Uh, so, so here's here's where the film uh, really um, didn't what was incomplete. The one of the the prizes for participating. So the local people, the Tarahumara people, they enter. There's no fee for them to enter. They're there. Everybody wants them to run. And then they get vouchers. They get these coupons for food. for Valets? Corn. Valets, they call it, yes. So you finish the race, and then they give you this coupon or this voucher that you take to, I don't even know where they take it, to some kind of a outlet or a store. And then they're given corn in, in exchange for these vouchers. So like this dramatic scene in that film is, they cancel the race. The gringos, my friends, arrange to get out of there. So the next day, they're on buses and airplanes, and they're just, everybody's leaving. And they have the vouchers with them. They, they leave town with the prizes. And so the film is like, see, look at this. There they go. They came, and they left, and they don't seem to care and they're taking off with the prize money and then that's sort of how it ends so it's like yeah that sucks these guys that's you shouldn't do that that was that's that what was would bad you move. possibly do with vouchers for corn back in america or wherever what would you even do with them right so so here's where the movie's incomplete number one that those vouchers you know in the film they don't address where did they come from in the first place so those came from a nonprofit here in the United States that we were all part of. We raised like $40,000 to purchase those vouchers and took those vouchers down there to distribute to the people. Yeah, they're using it as, as participation awards, but it, it, the running doesn't even matter. I mean, we just hand them out. The whole idea of this thing is to, is to feed hungry people. And the running is sort of just like this extra vehicle to make it happen. Anybody that wants a voucher would receive a voucher. Well, the race is canceled and there's all this chaos is happening. So they leave with the vouchers. But here's where the story ends and, it, it, and they should have continued because we went back down a few weeks later and distributed those vouchers to the people in that community. And, and in addition to that, some of those vouchers um, we're, we, we knew that a group of Tarahumara were coming to the Born to Run Ultra Marathon in May. So this race happened in March. We sent a couple of guys down uh, in April to distribute the, the tickets, which they did. And then some of them we held on to and distributed to a team of Tarahumara in California at the Born to Run Ultra Marathon in May. So the story, the movie, should have said, you know, yeah, these guys left. They were fearful for their, the safety of the participants. And then they came back and they distributed the vouchers. The vouchers were distributed. People got it. They got the corn. The intention of the event was fulfilled, but just not in the way that we had intended it to because of the chaos. Right. And again, this is me saying this <clears throat> as a viewer of a documentary, not just because I know you guys. Um, but again, they're like, oh, they flew away with the vouchers. It's like, well, for what? There's right. nothing to be done with these. They're specifically <laughs> for corn for these people there. 
Um, so yeah, no, you can't take them to Costco, man. Right. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, there's no, there's no benefit from you guys taking something that you paid for. I just, again, it's just as a viewer, it didn't make sense to me. So it was why I was texting you and Jose as I was watching. Um, and the other part of it was that, you know, there's crazy stuff in the government and you, you know, there was all this stuff and there's corruption and you wanted to make sure they got to the right people. If you just left them there, that was part of the problem was like, Hey, let's wait till the settles down to figure it out, which makes a lot more, makes a lot more sense to me. Um, so you and I were, were, were texting and talking. Um, oh no, the other part about appropriation. So I'm very aware that white folks like myself, uh, appropriate other cultures. However, the, the one young woman specifically says, basically shames anyone who runs in sandals. And so if I, if I meet you and I meet Josue and I'm like, oh, cool, the sandals thing, I'm faster, I don't get injured, whatever it is, and I start wearing Luna sandals, now all of a sudden I should be canceled because you don't respect their culture enough to wear them. That's, that's where it kind of, dr I draw the line at, well, now you're, you basically said, I, I shouldn't, it, it's, it's, it's mean to you if I run in sandals and it's insulting to you if I run barefoot. Yeah, that's, uh, that's sort of what, what was happening there in that moment in the film and what, what she's there in the film. By the way, I don't run in Luna sandals, but I have in the past. <laughs> um, and and uh, I've never been a minimalist runner either. I, you know, I have Luna sandals. I love Luna sandals. I wear them all of the time, but I, but I don't run in that. And I'm, I, I don't run barefoot either. I don't give a shit if people do or not. And it's whatever you want to do is fine with me. But in the film, what was happening is they were showing Tara Humara runners video of American people running in, in, in uh, Central Park in New York and running barefoot. And the, the, the Indians are like, why, why are they doing that? Why would, why would you run barefoot? Look, these people are in New York City. They have everything that they could possibly want and more. We in Mexico, the Indians, we, we run in sandals and we run barefoot because that's all we have. They don't have, they can't get on Amazon and get a pair of hokas, you know, get a pair of speed goats sent to them. That's all they have. And so, yeah, it's insulting to them. They're like, these guys are... I wouldn't say making fun of them, but you know, they're, they're just, it just doesn't make sense to them that people that have resources aren't using those resources. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Remember, you can join the Patreon train. You can also support us. And you can also support us just by watching more videos. So click this one that it recommended for you. That's right. It's based on your taste. I didn't pick it. You did. Love the mission. Mean it. I've got to run.